Welcome. Today we'll be talking about Black female chefs. In honor of Women's History Month, which is March, and Black History Month, which was in February, we thought it would be an interesting topic to cover Black female chefs and cookbook writers. And we will be doing a series. So today we'll be kind of covering the history of Black female chefs and cookbook writers. And then there will be a cooking demonstration and we will cover a few different Black female chefs and cookbook writers over this month. So as I began researching this topic, I found a lot of great, great and in interesting information by the end of the 20th century, fewer than 300 books on Southern cooking were credited to black writers, many fewer to black women, as you can imagine. Um, unfortunately, our history of slavery in this country did not lead to a high literacy rate amongst African Americans. And you can see the quotes below saying that memorizing recipes or cooking without them has its roots in slavery. The need for cooking aptitude predated the existence of legal literacy for enslaved kitchen workers, let alone the existence of cookbooks by free Black authors. And that's Stasia L. Brown in an article in the New Republic, The Untold History of African American Cookbooks. So that's to say that most cooking knowledge was passed down generation to generation or in houses where the slaves worked, you know, from slave to slave and that meant that most recipes had to be memorized or just you know with experience learned um, people learned how to cook and when especially free black slaves or free people would learn to read and write then they would write down these recipes to share with others So here's a short timeline of some noteworthy black female chefs and cookbook authors. Edith Fawcett and Fanny Hearn were teenagers when Thomas Jefferson bought them. They became very well versed in French cooking and were the top French chefs at Monticello. So you imagine at a president's residence, there were a lot of guests, a lot of dignitaries a lot of um, important people who expected a high level of cooking and their cooking really became well known as having you know the French style that a lot of people preferred back then. Um, they were pro possibly, probably illiterate. So a lot of what they knew and um, learned was passed down to others through experience or verbally. Zephyr Wright was um, another personal chef for a president, Lyndon B. Johnson, and she relayed a lot of her stories of discrimination and racial injustice to Johnson. And this is thought to have influenced his signing of the Civil Rights Act in 1964. In fact, after signing the Civil Rights Act, Johnson gave her the pen that he used to sign the act and said, you know, this was for you. And basically telling her how much she influenced his signing of that act. She had, has famously told him about going on road trips to the South and not being able to eat at restaurants or use the facilities along the way. And I think that you know, really affected how he perceived the plight of African-Americans in this country. Edna Lewis was very influential in modern Southern cooking. You can see one of her cookbook covers on this slide in pursuit of flavor. Verda Mae Grosner was a culinary anthropologist, griot, food writer, and broadcaster. And more recently, Jessica B. Harris also a culinary historian, college professor, cookbook author, and journalist. So on the right side, you can see some of the first cookbooks by black women who, who kind of paved the way for 
some of our modern cookbook writers. 1866 is a domestic cookbook written by Melinda Russell, and this is more of a pamphlet than a book, but was credited as one of the first cookbooks written by a Black female. Abby Fisher in 1881 wrote What Mrs. Fisher Knows About Old Southern Cooking. And you can see the cover of that on the lower right side of the slide. Also included is a photo of Monticello's kitchen. And that's where Edith and Fanny would have been um, working for Thomas Jefferson. So I'm going to focus on Leah Chase, and I'll also be cooking a little later a dish that she is known for. She is the queen of Creole cuisine. She was born in 1923 in Madisonville, Louisiana. She was born on a farm that grew sweet potatoes, okra, and strawberries. And being around you know, the farm and fresh food, she learned to cook very young and with her siblings. So as she grew older, she met her husband, Edgar Dukey Chase, at a dance. When they got married, um, she married into an entrepreneurial restaurateur family. They had, his parents owned a small sandwich stand in New Orleans and with Leah's help sort of grew into a more established Dukey Chase restaurant. And her influence is really important on this restaurant. Um, as it grew, the ambiance became elevated. As you can see, there was a full dining room. Uh, she was very insistent about you know, the decor and having that elevated sense of Creole. And she ended up publishing several cookbooks. The Dukey Chase cookbook, Listen, I say like this, and still I cook. And I love this photo of Dukey Chase back in the day, the restaurant. In the 1950s and 60s, the restaurant really became known in New Orleans, not only for its delicious food and elevated Creole cuisine, but, but Leah and her husband invited civil rights activists, uh, blacks, whites, people of all races to come and, and discuss civil rights activism, strategize and share stories. And over the years, Dukey Chase became a favorite spot of celebrities, politicians, and foodies. So it really gained some celebrity. And here's Leah Chase with Barack Obama. She has entertained many, many famous people over the years. If you'd like to know more, please visit our online resources from PGCMLS. We have a whole slew of biographies about Black female cookbook writers and chefs. We have Canopy that has documentaries in foreign and independent films. She is featured as one of the as panelists in Being in This World. And we have two of her cookbooks in our collection, Still I Cook and the Dookie Chase Cookbook. So please visit our catalog to check those out. So in a moment, you'll be joining me in the kitchen to cook breakfast shrimp and baked cheese grits. Here's the finished product. And I will be posting the recipe so you can follow along with me. And just as a preview, here are the ingredients you will need. We have shrimp, a variety of aromatics and vegetables, grits, shredded cheese and egg, some milk and butter, and seasonings like basil, parsley, and cayenne. So I'll see you over at the kitchen. Thanks again for joining us. 
Today we're going to make Leah Chase's breakfast shrimp with baked cheese grits. And you already heard a little bit of the history of Leah Chase, but she of course is the Creole queen. So I'm really excited to make this dish. I am really hungry. And even though it's not breakfast time, that is a-okay. You can eat this meal any time of the day. So I have all my lovely ingredients out here and um, I have yet to prepare, prepare them, cut them up, chop them up, etc., which I will do in a minute. But let's come over to the stove. I think I'm gonna make the cheesy grits first because I wanna get them in the oven and then I'll make the shrimp while those are baking. So see you there. All right, here we are at the stove. I've just boiled a few cups of water. We've got a cup of grits, an egg, a quarter cup of milk, and a cup of grated cheddar cheese. And so you probably want to follow the directions that the grits uh, tell you on their packaging because every grit is going to have a slightly different cooking time. So our goal here is to get the grits actually cooked and then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients before it goes in the oven. The oven is set and preheated at 375 degrees. So we've got our Water boiling, we're just going to add in the grits and see how this sets up. And if you don't have or you don't like grits, you can also try different types of grains. Like you could try cornmeal to make a more polenta type of dish or maybe even rice. You can make a cheesy rice dish. You know, it's always okay to make substitutions. So my grits already have salt in them. They came that way, but you wanna add salt to taste. So the grits are setting up really nice. I'll turn the heat down. And in the meantime, I will get my egg packed, my quarter cup of milk, and my cup of cheddar cheese. And we'll just mix that up in a separate container. And of course, at this point, if you'd like to add your own spices, pepper, even the jazz things up a bit, that's totally fine. All right, we're nice and mixed together here. It looks like my grits are pretty well cooked. If you don't have the quick or more instant grits, then it might take you a couple more minutes to get to this point, but you can kind of decide when they're almost done. And then you can add a butter or oil a spray to your can, to your pan. And then before you pour this whole mixture into your dish, I'm gonna add, see if we can play taste. You wanna add your cheese and egg mixture right there to your grit. Give it a nice good stir. You know, of course your eggs will start to set up pretty quickly. So you wanna make sure you get in there pretty fast. And when everything looks nice and incorporated, pour this luscious, luscious, cheesy mixture. Thank you our baking dish. And this is just one of the things I love about southern cooking and it's kind of Creole style. Really simple, but it's just so hearty and yummy. All right, so you can see how this grits and cheese mixture 
look in the can and see if it's ready for the oven. So I'll pop that in and then we can get some in the tray. All right, well, I've got all the ingredients prepped so we can start our breakfast shrimp. This is really exciting. So I've got my pan over here. I've got it and put it up to medium heat. First goes in a quarter cup of butter. Now the recipe that I put is sort of six. I don't have that recipe created at the moment, so I have some of the recipe. So this will serve three. So this is about a quarter cup of butter, which of course you have to have very, very good amounts of butter in Southern cooking. That's where a lot of the flavor comes from. And to that, I'm going to add a quarter cup of diced onion. I probably have a little bit more than that because I really do enjoy the taste of onion. And then I've got my green peppers sliced. Give them a pretty generally large chop. Now the recipe that I've posted also suggests that you take your four ripe tomatoes, dip them in boiling water, and then peel off the skins. Well, I like the skins, and I didn't want to go to the extra stuff, so if you don't like the skins and want to do that, that's totally fine. I've just taken a bunch of baby tomatoes and chopped those up. So you may get as creative as you like with this, cooking projects. That's the fun of cooking is that you can do things whatever way you think is best. Sometimes I'll look at three or four different recipes and kind of get my inspiration and then from there, you know, figure out what ingredients I have, what I need to substitute. So prior to the shrimp, I had already made the cheesy grits, as you saw. They will be baking in a 375 degree oven for 15 minutes, but it's always good to check on them how they go. They're looking good so far. So as the peppers and the onions are a little more translucent, I'm going to add my chopped garlic into the mix. And then next after this will come the tomatoes and the shrimp. Now for the shrimp, I'm using about a pound. The original recipe calls for two pounds. The kind that I bought are already cooked and that's why they're this kind of pinkish color. But if you can't find cooked shrimp or if you prefer to cook them yourself, you can get the skin on. That's, that's just fine, just however you can get it. Uh, if you buy the shrimp that are already cooked and peeled, and that just means that the end, when you add them here to the dish, you don't have to cook them for quite as long. So it looks like my onions are starting to get a little bit translucent. And now I'll add the tomatoes. And already it's starting to smell amazing. Got a quick stir. The colors are just beautiful. So you've got vibrant green, especially with the different color tomatoes I've been using. You've got some yellow, some red, the white onions. Let me crank up the heat a little bit to try to get those tomatoes going. And then as the vegetables kind of cook down a little bit, you can add some spices such as salt, brown pepper, and some cayenne to give it that Creole kick. The recipe calls for about a quarter teaspoon. I think I think we can handle a little bit more cayenne than that. What do you think? Oh, it goes into a teaspoon, but I like it spicy. All right. And on deck, we have some 
basil chopped up and some parsley. The parsley we can use as like a garnish at the end or you can incorporate it into the dish. Either way is fine. Get a slightly closer angle on that. Maybe up a little bit. You can see how beautiful this is turning out. All right, I think we are ready. To add this trunk in. Now you can keep the tail on if you so choose. While you cook. Oh, this is really exciting. Just think how good this is going to taste over our baked cheesy grits. And I think one of the best parts of this all is that I've timed it so the cheesy grits will be ready just around the same time as that shrimp will be nice and warm and ready to go. This would be such a nice hearty breakfast meal. Now you might not have time every morning to make something as delicious as this, but I could also imagine it being leftovers heated up. I think I'm just gonna get this parsley out of the way. Get my pan a little closer so you can see what it's looking like. Ooh, that is working really, really good. I'm gonna put that back on the heat and let it go for a few more minutes. And in the meantime, I think it's time to check on the grits. All right, let's see how they're going. Ooh, I do think we are ready to go with the grits. So this is how they look coming out of the oven. The egg has settled and stiffened up the mixture. Let me grab a plate over here because I think it'll be time to plate all of this pretty soon. So a good side dish for this, if you'd like to add even more vegetables, would be or spinach, perhaps, if you want to make it more of a lunch or a dinner type of meal. So let's see how this looks when I dig into it. Oh, so clean. All right, let's, let's see. We get a nice scoop of this. And I can see why we put the um, cooking spray on this because you definitely don't want this stick with all that cheese and egg in there. And if you don't really feel like or have the time to put this in the oven, you could always add some shredded cheese to your stovetop grits and you get a very similar type of end product. It just wouldn't have that egg and milk, milkiness to it. Okay, let's see how the shrimp is shaping up. I think we are ready to turn off the heat on that one. Oh, the smell is just incredible. It doesn't take very long. It's definitely one of those things that will cook up really quickly. And it's probably why it's my point as a breakfast dish. It doesn't take as long as other type of protein. But of course, if you don't have shrimp around and you'd like to use chicken, you could definitely do that as well. All right, let's spin some of this over. Grits. I think I lost a shrimp. Looks so pretty. Grab that shrimp up. There's a shrimp overboard. And then we can hang it. A nice bit of parsley. Oh, we're looking gourmet here. All right. 
there we have it. We've got our Daisy Grit and Shrimp. Breakfast Shrimp. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm so happy to be able to share such a delicious meal with you. Oh yeah, I think you're really gonna enjoy that. Can't wait to hear from you all. And please join us again for other programs at PGC MLS. Happy eating.